Successful people learn how to make their mind work for them. I'm David Nagel, and this is the Successful Mind Podcast. One night, I had a transformation, plain and simple. That's exactly what it was. I transformed three things about myself with with the idea of faith behind them that I would see what happened if I if I transformed these things and and then and then make choices from that from that experience. So um what did I change? I changed I changed who I was being by acting like I loved what I did. So I brought, we're going to talk a lot about this. I brought love into the picture. Now, I've told this story many times. And my, I, the concern that I always have when I tell this part of the story is that people think that it's just acting, right? Like you're, like you're an actor or an actress. I literally fell in love with what I was doing. And it started off with recognizing that the person who built the company that I worked for, he must actually love what he did because he was there every day. It was an extremely successful company. It's, it is, and that was 30 years ago. It's an extremely successful company today. Um, and I thought, what, you know, what is it that gets a person out of bed every day Uh, to go do something like this if they don't love it. Because I was recognizing in myself that I hated what I was doing. So I decided that I was going to fall in love with what I was doing. So love is the vibrational harmony or resonance with something. So if you have to realize this is not a change to transformation. I completely let go of hate and I totally stepped into the transformation of love. So now I'm putting myself in harmony with what I desire on an energetic level. This is so vitally important, right? Because when you put yourself in harmony with what you want, it allows you to see the good in the opportunity that shows up versus seeing what you don't want to see. If I'm in a if I'm in an energetic level of hate, if I'm if I'm pissed off all the time, and I am trying to make a transformation, so I'm walking around with this energy. What is the energy telling my brain to focus on? Everything that I don't like. So if I even have an opportunity that shows up that could be a fantastic opportunity, I'm gonna look at it and all I'm gonna see about it is things that I don't like. Because I'm pissed off and I don't like what I'm doing. And I'm projecting that into what I'm observing, which is then reflecting it back to me. And then that's all I notice. So it doesn't seem like an opportunity that I want to be involved with because all I see about it is what it is that I don't like. So the idea is that when I change it to love, it's like something magical happens. Because now you're seeing things um, with a completely different eye of understanding. It's like it raises your awareness to another level. You start to see something that previously, because of uh, an antagonistic emotional state, you didn't like, but now you're looking at it with a different eye. You're looking at it with the eye of love, and you start to see things about it that you actually do like. Because you, you have to realize there's a law of polarity that, that comes into um, this whole this whole idea of accelerating your income. And that means that everything has two sides. You can find something wrong with everything or anything if you focus on it long enough. Because there is something wrong with anything and everything, but there's also something right. So when you change over to the idea of love, you're energetically focused on what's right about this? What do I like about this? How much fun could this actually be for me? What are the opportunities that are are presenting here? You're coming from a totally different energetic state. Now, the second thing was, was that I had, at the time, a pretty poor work ethic, meaning that I worked to go home. 
because I didn't like what I was doing. So why would I even want to be there in the first place? I didn't really want to be there. Um, I could think of a hundred other things that I would rather be doing, but I didn't want to be there. But I had to be there because I had a family that I had to support. So it was a real struggle for me every single day to get myself to do something that I didn't like. And because I was doing that, I didn't really do a very good job at all. So I had to change that. I had to transform that. I had to transform um, from hating what I did and doing things just to get them done or just to go home to really focusing on how could I do my best? How could I give my best to what it is that I'm doing? And of course, that's also in harmony with the idea of love. If you think about this, if you, if you remember <laughs> the time when you first fell in love with someone, hopefully you do this if you love someone no matter what, but you want to do things for them. You want to pay attention to them. You want to be with them. You don't have to force yourself to think about them. Or you think about something that you love to do. Maybe it's a hobby, whatever. Maybe it's music or art. or um, Maybe it's the work that you're currently doing. You get lost. Like time totally disappears. You care about the quality of work that you're doing. You want to create something that for you is your best. Why? Because you love it. So it's, inter it's very, very interesting that these qualities already exist in us, but when you approach them from a place of, I need to change this, it becomes very difficult because behind the idea of change is a portion of, I don't really want to change. Yes, I would like the result, but I don't necessarily really want to change. When you come from a place of love, you're coming from a place of transformation, which allows you to step into a totally different energetic energy, and now you want to do your best. But there's a third piece. The third piece was that because I was so miserable, I didn't treat people very well. I was not nice, a nice person to get along with. Yeah, I had friends. That was fine, but I was kind of, you know, kind of crabby, kind of bitchy, if, if I'm going to be true about it. And I, that was not who I was on the inside. And I had recognized this night that I went through this transformation that I was being somebody that I really wasn't even familiar with. Like, who is this person that is treating people this way? And again, it was a learned behavior. It was a lot of self-loathing. It was a lot of self-pity. Um, and it was just being redirected in the, in the wrong place. So I decided I'm going to treat everybody with total respect for the rest of my life. And the respect comes from the honest respect of everybody being a human being, everybody being a child of the universe or spirit or God, whatever it is that you want to call it. They, everybody deserves that basic respect, okay? So those are the three things that I decided to change. Now, here's the faith part of this. So I'm literally sitting around, and as I'm sitting around with this and I'm, and I'm, and I'm thinking about it, of course I have that other voice in my head that says, oh, you're never going to do this. You've never stuck to anything in your life. What the hell makes you think you're going to stick to this? And I thought, you know what? I have tried everything that I can possibly think of to change this. It appears because if I was to go back from a change perspective where what I hadn't done was gone to school, then I would need to go to school if I was going to change it instead of transform it. So what did I do? I thought, okay, I don't have the time to go back to school because I have to work as much overtime as I, as I possibly can. And even if I did have the time, I don't have the money to go back to school. So this was not a possibility, although it seemed like the most logical answer. When this transformation took place, it took all that factual knowledge that I had about how this had to um, be different in my life, and it actually threw all the logic completely out the window. And even the people that were around me at the time 
were kind of like, how do you go from making 20000 a year to 62000 a year? And this was at a time when I didn't even really know anybody that was making $62,000 a year. It was not something that I grew up with. Uh, it was not something that was in the neighborhood that I grew up with. So it was a big, it was a big transformation, and it was a lot of money for me at that, po- at that time in my life. And it totally transformed everything um, about my life at that time, especially from a financial perspective, because I was no longer I was no longer struggling uh, with all these different things that are you know were kind of going on around me. So I said to myself, I made a deal with myself. I said, "Look, you have tried everything else in your life; nothing has changed." Do this for a year and see what happens. Well, I got to tell you, it didn't take a year. It took a month. In one month, everything changed. In one month, my income went from twenty thousand to sixty-two thousand. So now, what it, what is it that I changed? I fell in love with what I was doing. I put faith behind that idea that that something about this made sense and it was going to cause a change. I didn't know how the change was going to show up. I didn't know what it was going to look like. Um, There was a logical part of my head that said, this is a stupid idea, but it was something that I did anyway. Now, there's another piece to this that is so vitally important that you you can't leave this out because this is about what we call exercising your faith. It's also called claiming your results. So we get, we have results, we get results when we claim them. Now I want you to think about this. Think about the things in your life that you don't like currently. Um, How often do you talk about or think about the fact that you don't like them? Probably all the time. It probably runs through your mind constantly. It's almost like a voice that you wish you could shut off, but you can't shut off. Or maybe you actually get some satisfaction out of it. I mean, people have all different kinds of reasons for doing this, but one of the things that's very true about it is that people run around constantly talking about how bad things are and how tough things are and how terrible the world is right now. And I mean, just anything that they can find to any bandwagon they can find to jump on. But what they're doing is they're literally claiming for their life, the thing that they don't want. And what do I mean by claiming it? I mean, by talking about it, there is power in your words. And what it is that you consistently speak is what it is that you're going to consistently be focused on in your mind. when you're talking about how terrible everything is, you're acting in faith on what's going to go wrong tomorrow. You are, in a way, falling in love or being in, in harmony or resonance with the thing that you don't want in your life. So I'm going to just read you one more thing here from Hollywell's book that I think is pretty cool here. He says, many failures in what people want to manifest are because we do not force our expectation to keep pace with our desire. We do not force our expectation to keep pace with our desire. So usually when somebody's talking about something in a negative way, there's something that they don't want to happen, what are they doing? They're they're demonstrating that they would like a different result. But because they don't know how to get a different result, they stay in the complaining mode of what they don't want, not realizing that that continues to create and manifest more of what they don't want in their life. And guess what? Without any extra effort. So think about it. All the problems that you have in your life right now, do you have to force them to happen? Do you have to work hard to make those problems happen? No. They show up all the time, every single day, 
Um, you know, it's not like you have to do anything to force create those things to happen. That's where you help hear people say like, I was born under an unlucky star or I'm never lucky or I never get a break. Things never go my way. And then of course, that's what they experience in their life on a consistent basis. So this is very important that Hollywell's pointing out here that if we desire something in our heart that is good, if we desire something in our heart that is part of our purpose, but we do not continually expect that good to happen in our life, then it doesn't manifest. I hear people who sit down and they write out their goals all the time. Um, They will create uh, like positive affirmations for themselves. But when they're not looking at their goals, when they're not reading their affirmations, basically their mind is going, where is it? Why is the money not here yet? How come it hasn't shown up yet? And it's not that the universe is not sending them opportunity to allow that to change. It's because they keep talking about why it's not here that their mind can't see the opportunities that the universe is sending. So we're not disciplining ourselves to have our, the way that we think and the way that we speak And yeah, the way that we feel, to be a positive expectancy uh, about about what it is that we want. What I did that was different was that I claimed my, the things that I wanted every day. Every day I would go to work and say, I absolutely love what I do. I'm gonna give the very best that I can today. I'm gonna better my best from yesterday. If I did something great yesterday, I'm going to try to find a way to do it even better today. And I would also work on treating everybody with total respect. I would literally look for things in people to admire about them. Uh, I would praise people for things that I could find in them to admire about them. So the whole time, I'm training my mind to think the way that I want it to think. This is a total transformation. And and why is this different than change? Because I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it. I wanted to be who I really was. And this is who I really was as a person. Not this other person that that had been created out of, you know, a a dysfunctional family and hard times and poor decision-making. That's not the person that I wanted to be. I wanted to be this person that was in my heart that really wanted to come out and actually you know, be, do, and have something else in my life. So claiming your results is extremely important. You have to name it, say what it is, and you have to claim it. Now, you have to master the concept of faith. Uh, entrepreneurs have to tap into a place where you know that you can manifest whatever it is that you need, okay? You have to tap into a place where you know you can manifest whatever it is that you need. So what does that that look like? Think about, here's an exercise to do when you're done listening. I want you to come up with five to 10 things that you in your life have experienced where you absolutely had to have something or something had to happen. And through your sheer determination, you made that happen. Now, you may have went right back to the way that you were living. It may not have stuck around, but it did happen. Everybody has experiences like this in their life, even from when they could, maybe when, when you were a child, you have experiences like this. You have to study faith and you have to study the laws of the universe. Through understanding, the understanding of faith and the understanding of the laws of the universe, you raise your awareness of what faith truly is and you strengthen it. It, I mean, it gets stronger. You have to keep reading. I'm going to talk more about the laws a little bit later on, but right now, think to yourself, 
what is it that I'm putting in my mind every day that strengthens my faith? The uh, best book I've ever come across on faith is a book called God Works Through Faith. Um, it's a program that we do also. And it's the whole idea is that whatever it is that you want the universe to manifest in your life is going to come through the strength of your faith. That means you step out and say yes when you don't know how anything is going to happen, but you step out and say yes anyway. You also have to understand that your desire constitutes a divine plan for your life, and your faith guides you through that plan. So let me say that one more time. You might want to write that down. Your desire constitutes a divine plan for your life. So when you feel that desire on the inside, it is, it is the divine plan for your life trying to manifest itself in who you're being and in physical form in your life. Faith, your faith to follow that, guides you through that divine plan. That's what guides you through. That's, it's like an invisible roadmap of yeses. It's an invisible roadmap of whatever it is that I focus on, whatever it is that I say that I'm going to become, whatever it is that I do in my life to act on those ideas, that will happen in my life. Only by following your divine, plan, your divine path in life are you ever going to find real satisfaction anyway. Um, think about how many people you see that are getting older and older and older in their life and they're completely miserable. They're living a very mediocre life. Their life is not expanding and getting better. It's actually contracting and getting smaller. It's like, it's, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting idea and, and they're, a lot of people put a lot of logic behind this, but it makes absolutely no sense. We all know we're going to die. That we know. My personal belief is that we don't die the way most people think we die. We just transform into um, the next phase of our journey, right? The body falls away, and we, we transform into the next phase of our journey. But what do people do when they start getting to a certain age? It's different for everybody. It could be 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. It's different for every person. They start to plan for the end instead of living in the now, right? I mean, if you're 60 years old and you're planning for the end by, by making your life smaller instead of expanding it, you may live 40 more years. And you're going to spend all that time preparing for the end. It makes absolutely no sense. So what comes of that? Do you think that there's any kind of satisfaction that comes with life? No, generally it's regrets for most people. They regret the things that they didn't do. They regret the friendships they didn't have. They regret the contribution that they didn't make. They regret the uh, opportunities they didn't take advantage of, the people that they didn't love, uh, the people that they didn't make amends with. Uh, why go into... What, you know, spending all of that time in regret when you can actually do it in expansion. And as long as you keep seeking the inner truth of who you really are, trusting spirit, strengthening your faith, your desires are going to manifest, even if it takes some time, right? It's going to take some time. The more you do it, the stronger it becomes. There's no question around it. Okay, Here's the next thing. Surround yourself with people of like thinking. This is, I cannot tell you how important this is. When you transform, and you have to really think about this, when you transform, uh, the people that you have been surrounding yourself with probably are not going to like the transformation too much because it's going to contradict everything that they believe that keeps them safe, everything that they believe that is real in their life. Um, and it's just, it's, it, it doesn't make them feel comfortable. So one time uh, I had a mentor of mine tell me something that I thought was pretty practical advice. He said, you know, as you make these transformations, David, you're going to force people around you 
to change. And I said, why, why is that? And he said, because they have to figure out a way to adapt to your change. But they're not going to like it because they have to change. It's not a voluntary transformation like you're making. They're changing because they have to figure out how to adapt to what you're doing that is now making them uncomfortable. So I always remembered that moving forward, and I was always very cognizant about the idea of not everybody can go with you, and that's the absolute truth. Some people can, some people will, especially the ones that you inspire, but the ones that feel threatened by it, they're probably not people that are going to go with you, and at some point in time, they're going to drop off away from, you know, away from your life. But you're going to bring in better people. I shouldn't say better. I should say people that have, that are more in, in harmony and in tune with the vision for where it is that you want to go. People that you can inspire and they can inspire you. Um, that's really what I'm talking about. I think that one of the things, what, a very important things is that a person should, should hire a coach or a mentor. Um, it's extraordinarily important. My mentor said to me, you want to find somebody that is, you know, um, 100 miles ahead of where you are, and if, if, it's, if it's a person that has gone in a direction that you want to go, and then you have to submit, you know, as a student to that person and listen to what it is that they have to teach you, and then you have to follow, you have to follow that teaching. Um, what does that do? That, that collapses time. That allows a person to make a quantum leap because you're not trying to figure everything out on your own, you have somebody who's spent a lifetime doing that already. They've learned from mentors. They know how to not make all the mistakes, and they teach you how to go directly from A to B to C um, in your life. So very important to hire a coach or a mentor. Next, I would say never let the ignorant opinion of other people stop you from acting in faith. And, um, you know, the person that doesn't know what spirit is telling you to do, you can't expect them to understand. Just follow what's going on inside of yourself. So, you know, nobody, nobody knows what God or spirit or the universe is telling you to do or the direction that you're supposed to go in. Yet there's a hell of a lot of people out there that would like to pretend that they do know what's good for you. You know what's good for you, and the other part about this is also being willing to accept the idea when you make a mistake. Now, I could spend a week on this teaching alone, but I'm not. I'm going to give you just a short synopsis on this idea just to give you, just to give you um, a little bit of an idea of why people don't like to make mistakes. Most people are raised with a healthy amount of guilt or, and guilt and shame in their life, period. That's how we're disciplined. That's how we're controlled. Um, it, it starts when we're babies. It moves into when we go to school. It's then done uh, when we go into the workforce. It's done by the media. It's done by in poli it's politics. It's, it's just done everywhere. So the idea is that a mistake is a mistake. A mistake, we can't actually learn anything without making mistakes. So you're going to make mistakes. Mistakes do not become a problem until you get wrapped up in self-loathing around the mistake, till you get wrapped up in guilt around the mistake, till you get wrapped up in shame around the mistake. I'm actually suggesting that you bring love to your mistake because it's actually showing you what not to do which leaves the only thing that's left is what to do. Mistakes make us stronger, they help us grow, they give us guidance, and they give us wisdom. They're absolutely essential in our life. Um, you want to create momentum. You create momentum by taking this desire, taking the love, taking the faith, making the decision to follow this desire in your life, and doing it every single day. The great thing about momentum is that it picks up a life of its own. So it doesn't become something that's difficult after a short period of time. Besides, if you do this on a regular basis, I can promise you that you're going to see results really quick. And as you see results really quick, it's going to be very exciting, right? It's going to be tremendously exciting. 
The more results that we see, the quicker that we see those results, the more exciting things are actually going to be in your life. And the last part about this lesson that I want to that I want to bring into this is the idea of beauty, okay? Um, you might think to yourself, what does beauty have to do with this? It has everything to do with it. If you study the ancient philosophers, the Greek and Roman, um, they came from this place where they were looking at the world through the lens of beauty in their mind. Like, what's beautiful about this? What's beautiful about that? And then realizing that beauty was God's highest form of creation. And beauty is, is, of course, perceived differently by different people. So you don't want to use somebody else's definition of beauty in your life, but you want to use your definition of beauty. And one of the, things that, one of the ways that you can express love and faith in your life is by bringing beauty into it, whether that's putting flowers in your home or upgrading your house uh, and your, the way that you live um, to, to make it more beautiful right now instead of saying you'll do it later, you'll do it when you have the money. Start treating yourself in beautiful ways. Fly first class. Start putting yourself out there and, and being the person that you want to become. It's literally a beautiful transformation that you're actually making in your life. And the more that you do it, the more that it catches on. And the more fun it becomes, the easier it becomes, and the more things begin to manifest in your life. You also will see that the income will begin to accelerate rapidly because you're harmonizing with everything that is beautiful, everything that is good, and everything that is love in your life. This is David Nagel. I wish you all an absolutely fantastic day, and we'll see you on the next class. Thanks for listening to the Successful Mind Podcast. And if you like what you heard and you want to know more, go to davidnagel.com forward slash free stuff.